Hi, Joji. Oh, hey, Agat. What's that? Did you draw that? This? Oh, no. This is a bar graph. Ooh, I thought those were buildings. <laughs> hmm, they do look like buildings, but a bar graph is used to organize information so that you can understand it easily. Like this one, it shows the number of typhoons that hit our country in the past years. Hmm, there were more typhoons in 1993 than in 2003 and 2013. That's right. See, just by looking at the bar graph, you were able to understand what information it shows. And you can easily compare the number of typhoons each year. That's right. But aside from the bar graph, there are other ways to organize information so that you can understand them better. Like tables, these are used to present different information through the use of columns and rows. We also have pictographs that show information using pictures. And you have your pie charts that are used to present parts of a whole. Cool! Instead of looking at many numbers, these are easier to understand. I totally agree. Why are you looking at that bar graph anyway? Well, I'm just wondering if we are going to have more typhoons this year. Interesting. Did you find out yet? Well, there were less typhoons in 2003 and 2013 than in 1993. Hopefully, the numbers don't get high this year, but it's really hard to tell. But at least we have an idea, right? That's right. And that's one of the uses for bar graphs. It helps us prepare for what may happen in the future. So we can prepare. Right. I totally agree. And be ready for what tomorrow brings. That's right. Now let's prepare. Oh, for... For what? Prepare. We don't know how many typhoons or how strong they can be, so we must be prepared, right? That's a good idea, Agot. We must always be prepared. So, how do we prepare? How about building a big boat so when there's flood... <laughs> no, no, Agot, not like that. But what we can do is prepare an emergency bag. What do you think? Right, right. An emergency bag where we can put flashlights, first aid kit, and food. <laughs> but first we need to find a good bag. Okay, let's do that. What about you? Do you have an emergency bag at home? Well, I think you should start preparing one too. Let's go, Agat. Yesterday, I ate merienda with my friends. We had a pack of yummy kuchinta from Mang Ambo. And do you know how many kuchinta we ate? Let me show you this bar graph. Can you tell me who ate the most kuchinta? <laughs> Obviously, it's Ogot. He had 15 kuchinta. Oh, he really loved it. Can you tell who ate the least kuchinta? Yes, Kathy. <laughs> She likes Kuchinta, but it's not her favorite. Joji and I ate the same number of Kuchinta. Can you tell how many Kuchinta we shared all together? Yes! Add all these numbers and we'll get 30! There were 30 Kuchinta! And look at this pie chart! Ogot ate half of the whole pack of Kuchinta. Even in just a glance, you can see how we shared our merienda yesterday. Thanks to the bar graph and pie chart. Ogot may have the most Kuchinta, but one thing is for sure. We all had a great merienda time yesterday. Have you heard of the word determination? It's a quality that makes you continue doing what is difficult. It means you keep doing it even if it's very hard. In our story today, 
Let's find out how determination saves not just one, but two lives. Soldier and Boy Saved Each Other by Suzanne Simard. Although there are many sad stories about Yolanda, there are also stories that have happy endings. This is one such story that brings hope. Lieutenant Colonel Boise Karangan is with the Philippine Air Force. He was in Tacloban with other soldiers on red alert to help people get to safety before the typhoon arrived. Lieutenant Colonel is one of the higher ranks among soldiers. It is two ranks away from General. When Typhoon Yolanda came, it brought waves over four meters high. Even if you could run fast, you could not escape. So, Lieutenant Colonel Boise Karangan and other soldiers were swept out to sea when a huge wave hit and flooded their office near Tacloban City Airport. Karangan found himself floating on a piece of wood from a wrecked house. He held on for about six hours as Yolanda continued to cause damage in the coastal towns of Leyte and Eastern Samar. Wrecked house is a house that has been destroyed. After several hours, Garangan saw a seven-year-old boy clinging to a floating coconut tree. His name was Miguel and he looked tired and scared. The soldier joined the boy and floated to what seemed to be the middle of nowhere, clinging to the piece of wood. They were tossed around like toy dolls by strong waves and swirling winds. Clinging means holding on tightly. Why did they cling to the piece of wood? At one point, Karanga knew that he had met young Miguel for a reason. While they were floating, the soldier was getting very tired, but the boy reminded him of his family. He also thought that Miguel was too young, so he felt determined to save him. Garangan's determination was rewarded when he saw the shoreline of Basay, on the other side of San Juanico Strait. As they went ashore, people found them and quickly wrapped the boy in a blanket. Lieutenant Colonel Boise Karangan lived to tell the story of how the boy he saved had saved him too. Great story, right? With determination, we can save lives. What about you? What are you determined to do? Yo, what's up? It's James Liz Reed here, and you better listen carefully because today I will teach you how to read words with silent letters. What are silent letters? Well, these are letters in words, but we don't say their sound. Take a look at this word. Knit. Did you notice anything strange about this word? We usually read a word using its first letter. But this word doesn't follow that rule. Words like this can be very tricky. But don't worry, I'll show you more words that break this rule. Knit. As you can see, it has the letter K at the beginning. But we don't say it sound. Knit. Not. As you can see, it has the letter K at the beginning. But we don't say it sound not. Can you read this word? We read this as no. We don't read the letter K at the beginning of this word. No. New. Another word that begins with a silent letter K is new. Knock and knob also start with a silent letter K. Knock, knob. Knee 
and Neil are also rule breakers. We do not say the letter K at the beginning of these words. This is ni. This is Neil. Do you notice something about these words? Correct! They all have the silent letter K. These words are tricky, but we can see a pattern here. Whenever the letter K is followed by the letter N, it becomes silent. Let's read the words again. Not, knit, new, no, knock, knob, knee, kneel. Let's play a game. Let's look for the silent letters in these words. This is the first word. Do you see the silent letter here? Correct! The letter K is silent. Can you read the word? We read this word as knee. Read it with me. Knee, knee, knee. Does this word use any silent letters? Yes! It uses the silent letter K. New. Read it. New. How about this word? Do you see the silent letter here? Are you sure it's the letter T? Try again. That's right! This word uses the silent letter K. Knit. Your turn. No. Can you tell what the silent letter is in this word? We don't hear the letter K in this word. No. Say it with me. No. Not. Do you see any silent letters here? That's right. We don't hear the sound of the letter K. Not. Your turn. Can you tell which is the silent letter? Correct. It is the letter K. Knock. Read it with me. Knock. Now, let's read them all together. Knee, knit, no, new, not, knock. Good job! Now you know more words that use the silent letter K. But there are more words that use the silent letter K around you. Try looking for them. I'm ready, Joji! <laughs> Good job, Agot! Now that we have these bags, whenever there's an emergency, we can just grab them and go somewhere safe. And you know what? Just so everything is organized, I made a list of what's inside my emergency bag. Wow, that's impressive! May I see, Agot? Here! Bread? Chips? Crackers, canned goods, hey, hey, these are all food, oh God. Of course not. Look, there's medicine, flashlight, and bottled water. Yes, but everything else is food. Really? Come on, let's try organizing the things in your bag. 95% is food, while the others, medicine, Flashlight and bottled water are 1% each. Oh, I guess you're right. That's a lot of food. Well, oh good. it's okay to have a lot of food. But maybe you should add a bit more medicine and a few more bottles of water. <laughs> right, I'll do that. Thanks, Joji, and thank you for your pie chart. <laughs> no problem, oh good. What about you? Is your emergency bag ready? <laughs> That's great. Well, thank you for being with us today. We'll see you again next time, and we hope you had a great time because my room is your room. Goodbye! Goodbye.